and welcome back inside Brunch. It is 16 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for, be, for being with us from um, 10 o'clock this morning. My next guest is a graduate of the University of the West Indies. Uh, he holds BSc Economics, MSc in Petroleum Economics. He has had postgraduate training at Oxford College of Petroleum Studies. He is a former central bank economist. He has worked at the National Gas Company for 20 years. I can do this for the next half hour and not run out. He's also published se several research papers, articles on the energy industry, technology transfer, and strategic planning. He is Mr. Gregory Maguire. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. It is good to see you once again. I'm very pleased to be here. Good morning, Rene. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Good to have you here. The paradigm shift occurred a long time ago, so the discussion is no longer whether we are in a recession or an economic adjustment, whatever it is, and you may choose to differentiate. There has to be a realignment of expectations from workers, employers, government, social projects, the levels of multinational concessions, and the latter in particular relating to a compensation fund in uh, uh, situations we find ourselves now where uh, organizations say it is no longer we are no longer solvent we must get out and workers are saying well you have for many years um, benefited uh, from our labor you cannot leave us high and dry for a three month situation so my first question is as the former minister in the ministry of finance um, Mariana Brown recently echoed the sentiments of the honorable prime minister that in addition in addition to the, um, the, 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 the changes, vacillation of world economic fortunes. One constant is that we've got to find a way to help workers um, in, in, through difficult times, as well as better manage our production levels. Speak to what are we to expect more specifically um, from multinationals who are given concessions to operate here, find it no longer feasible. They must leave and leave our workers uh, holding the bag, as some would choose to, 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 to phrase it. Well, first of all, let's just deal with the current situation. Um, it's not unexpected. Um, once you have uh, world markets um, collapsing, prices collapsing in international markets and the uh, economics of the business changing, um, capital will make necessary adjustments. And that's the adjustments that we are seeing right now. ArcelorMetal, um, Shell, BP. And what that is going to have is a ripple effect um, cascading across the economy, as in fact we have seen with Centrin. Mm -hmm. so, so these things are um, par for the course in a recessionary condition or in a condition of collapse or um, commodity prices as we face today. Um, so what about the plight of workers? You know, one of the things that we have to correct in Trinidad and Tobago is waiting until crises happen mm -hmm. before we see what we need to put in place. Mm -hmm. um, we do it at the corporate level. We do it at the national level. We do it at the corporate level. We do it at the individual level. Um, so... Today and this time, these times are not the time to talk about. It's not the time to talk about um, having a workers' fund or or any such thing, because simply because the companies can't do it. Mm. Um, I don't even know that the government can do it now. But we keep postponing these conversations when we are in the good times. You see, <laughs> we enjoy the good times. We postpone the conversations, even though we know that these things are mm. happening. This is not the first time Trinidad and Tobago is going through this kind of crisis. We all, some of us here, are old enough to know what happened in the, in the, in the, in the 80s, although, as I have realized, more than 50% of the population really don't have a clue about what happened in the 80s. I mean, they're just under 40 and they just don't know. But nonetheless, a country been through this sort of situation in which commodity prices crashed and in which adjustments had to be made and I have no evidence that over the last uh, 30 years since then that anything has been put in place to support workers uh, during periods such as this. So having said that, I think that looking at the, the issue of some fund for compensation for workers in the event of companies having to fold up and so on really ought to be part of the policy mix. Um, can they do it now? 
I'm afraid I don't think they can. So it means that uh, you cannot just leave the, uh, the, the, the the workers now out there. It means that the company must step in because of the negligence, if you agree, of the governing of those who governed before negligence because of lack of foresight to have put this in place. Because as you said, it is not the first time, and only at the crisis we're talking about it. But part of governance is to proactively work on things. So the failure to do so. Does that now leave the onus on the country, which is you and I and our tax dollars, not the government money as people seem to bandy about our money? Is it that we must now step up to assist our fellow man here with something the equivalent of a safety net or a softer landing? Well, you, again, Rene, you know, um, in the 80s, we set about in 1982 to do a soft landing, you know. Um, that was the term then. Mm. Uh, we must bring the economy to a soft landing. Uh, it never happened. You know, the economy crashed. Mm. Uh, we continued living the way we lived and the economy crashed. So um, I won't, I won't um, get many fans this morning if I were to say that um, what we have to do now is to take the lessons away and to begin to put things in place. I don't know that the conversation about workers' fund and so on is something that is that is that you all of a sudden you would you would you could put it in place. Mm -hmm, okay. um, uh, uh, I think that there may be existing provisions in the law that that defines what needs to happen in the event that you have to shut down operations or in the event that workers are retrenched. And I think that um, all that efforts must be made to ensure that those rules and those laws are observed um, are observed by all parties involved in this process. But to the extent that they have to be changed, I think we need to learn from these lessons today and uh, put stuff, such stuff in place um, going forward. You are being very delicate, so let me see if I extrapolate accurately from this to use our parents' analogy. Crapo just became an addictive smoker. <laughs> Or crap or smoke your pipe is more accurately. That's what you're saying is the situation for those who are out of a job right now. Is that what we say? There is nothing can be done here. Well, there's there's things that can be done within the context of the law, but that's about it, really. Um, you see, again, unlike unlike even sometimes in the 80s and up to 1975 and mm -hmm. so on, when, when foreign companies packed up shop and left the country, the government then had some resources that enabled the government to purchase some of these enterprises. One recalls Carney, um, Shell, um, even Texaco. Uh, government had the resources to purchase these, purchase these assets. I don't know that government has... Government, well, if you look at the fiscal accounts now, I, am not, I do not believe that the, fiscal, the, the government has the fiscal space to make that kind of decision. Apart from which, I think government, in the case of, of some of the, the foreign multinationals and so on, I think government have, have, governments have learned over time that it is best to leave such operations in private hands. All right. So we, 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 will be, we are in concert here that everything is important in this discussion, just some things are more immediate. Immediate here, um, I, I think, to at least put in the public <laughs> arena, arena that if you're going to leave this in private hands, which I, I kind of agree with that because we have seen the wonderful job always done by many governments who, who put their fingers in it, but we must put in the public domain that there must be a different discussion when you come to giving concessions for multi multinationals to invest here. You must have them. Every country, we must have them. But it, it, it must be at least put in the public square that the next time we're talking about encouraging investment here, that the, it, 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 the ground rules must be totally different. Yeah, and I will, ag I will agree with that completely. I think the lessons of the past have taught us that, that you want to protect the community and the country, um, you know, the host community and the country um, from the excesses or from being disadvantaged by the operations of foreign and local enterprises. Let us not, let us not delude ourselves into believing that local enterprises mm -hmm. and local businesses are not mm -hmm. just as ruthless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in some cases, they're probably more ruthless than the foreign enterprises. You know, we probably just don't pay as much attention to them or we believe that foreigners um, get more concessions than do locals. Um, I don't know that that, that, that is so. Um, and therefore, 
the, 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 it seems to me that we're suggesting, and I think that there's a case that says that one needs to strike a greater balance uh, in terms of sharing of the burden when times like this hit. Sharing the burden and sharing the blame. I like that because um, every time I've heard the Honorable Prime Minister speak, he always shares, or I, I think rightly so, the blame. Let's talk about sharing that blame right now. While we talk about government's concessions and we speak of multinationals, everybody must take some is a central question here. It begs either criticism or clarity. Has bargaining bodies or the union um, that represent the workers paid sufficient attention to these issues of severance and, and soft landing. I mean, ex-government, apart from what the government should do with the concessions, um, the representatives of the workers, have they been paying enough attention to things like this as against just playing here is a salary increase, that sort of thing? No, I think I think the government, I think uh, some of the more progressive trade unions have spent quite a lot of time focusing on issues of working conditions, focusing on issues of, of, of health plans and so on, and in particular, trying to have pension plans um, um, improved. Uh, in addition to that, I think whatever revisions we've had on Severance Act over the years has been due to the to the activities and the, um, the, the advocacy mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of the trade union movement. Um, I think what has happened, though, is that prosperity lulls us into a sense of complacency, <laughs> and um, and uh, we, we we ease the pressure, ease our foot off the of the pedal in the when the economy is in boom.